everybody, it's Stuart Smith, and I am joined by Kevin Gray, Demetrius Thurston, and Jay Rabb of Supermassive Media, and I'm so glad to have them here today because I'll tell you what, what wild times we're looking at here with Twitter. It's just the, the hits just keep on coming with uh, Elon Musk, the moves he's making. Uh, we've got news that now cannabis imagery is allowed in some of the ads. That may not mean anything to you, but it does to several of our shared clients. But even more than that, the, the jokes that you see on late night television are about the blue check mark. And now you got to pay to be verified. So Metallica isn't Metallica unless they pay $8 a month, which of course everybody's laughing at. I've heard a quote from somebody on this Zoom with me that said Twitter would be dead in a year. So we'll see if he backs that up. Okay, we see him nodding. But let's kick it to you first, Demetrius. You're the one, uh, you kind of have your... Your feet on the pavement, your nose to the grindstone, you're listening to all the tea leaves. Tell us what you're hearing. So I'm more excited about the future of advertising on Twitter with this regulation, mainly because it's been pretty chaotic since Musk actually took over with the culture around it, with the sentiment towards advertising on the platform, having the blue check mark. And while it's still viewed as a negative, ultimately, I think it will be more beneficial for advertisers just adding one more layer of regulation. And specifically with cannabis, I'm really excited about that because for the past pretty much ever since Twitter's been around, it's been really difficult to advertise cannabis on the platform, like especially photos of it. And being able to see an ad that has both a photo of cannabis and a ticker tag of that company, I think is an amazing development. Well, okay, so Kevin, talk about what you see though, because we've heard about it already. There's big advertisers that have either put their accounts on hold or they've completely said, look, we're out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gotta make a, that's gonna have a massive impact. Yes, there's gonna be revenue coming in with everybody paying their $8. Uh, I don't know that they can make up the the shortfall that's coming uh, that we see through advertisers pulling their budgets. What are your thoughts? Well, social media at the end of the day has never had the user as the customer. Um, I'm I'm the customer. The advertiser has always been the customer, and that's how it's always been, regardless of what network it is. Uh, Twitter, unfortunately, and and. I, I say this unfortunately again because I am the customer of Twitter um, is focusing on creating a user centric platform. And that is not why people use Twitter. That's why people use Reddit. That's why people use other platforms where they can have that deeper personal connection. Twitter's a news platform, it's a what's happening platform. That's the whole shtick of Twitter. And that's really why they came uh, popular. Uh, and yes, yes, I, I have said on record that I don't think Twitter is going to last in the same way, shape and form within about a year. And I, I, I still stand by that. And the reason I stand by that is very simple. It is because of this blue check mark. Why did Twitter have to initiate the blue check mark from the beginning? Does anybody remember? Anybody at all? They got sued. They got sued because of impersonation happening on the website because people were just allowed to say whatever they wanted. Now, when you take away a verification where it has to go through all these loops and channels, we verified clients. It took about five to six months in the past. They had to be listed on a senior exchange. We had to have three reputable pieces of news to go out with them. You don't need that anymore. What you need is a credit card. I just verified one of our clients so we could start running advertising. I don't have a client email. I don't have the same area code for their phone number. They gave me a blue check mark without even asking like any questions whatsoever. It's not a verification as much as it is a, a receipt for purchase. And mm -hmm. that's really what people are starting to see it as. The allure of the blue check mark is gone. Yeah. And when you take the allure of the blue check mark away, it doesn't matter if you have one or not. I'm in the camp that either everybody gets one or nobody gets one. Because that's how you regulate this type of platform. Right now, we, in kind of contrary to what Demetrius is saying, we're going way far against it. All right. Well, Jay, you are, you know, Kevin brought up Reddit. You're, you know, you're really involved as a gamer with Discord, Reddit, and some of these other platforms as well. And you've got some news or some feedback on what Snapchat recently did. So I know you probably have thoughts on Twitter as well, but I want to talk to you about Snapchat and AI because 
in our pre-discussions, we find out just like we've seen before. Look, I had so many cannabis companies that were solar companies before that or wind energy before that. Then I have cannabis companies that, lo and behold, they turned into blockchain companies. Those blockchain companies moved into crypto. Now they're AI companies. And so everybody's putting AI in their earnings releases. That's what's getting them trending. What are you seeing with what Snapchat just did? Well, Snapchat was uh, right on the bandwagon. As they publicly traded company, they're going to follow the trends of the investors. Unfortunately, they were following the trends of the investors and not listening to their user base. And so they jumped on the AI wagon and they're like, hey, we have this new AI feature. Investors come look at us. And then all the users are starting to write negative reviews, one-star reviews of this and saying they're going to delete the app because they hate the AI feature that Snapchat came up with. So they completely ignored their user base in order to follow the investors on board to be in this hype. And just like you said, all these companies are following the hype and turning into the companies that the investors want to see with completely ignoring who their clients are. Yeah, that's a good point. I was in a sales meeting with a client uh, just the other day, and the, the subject came up about chasing trends. And it's kind of funny when you think about this analogy, but chasing trends is like chasing the dragon. You're never going to catch that dragon at all. You can try to chase every single trend, but a consistent marketing strategy tailored towards the targeted art audience that you're trying to go for will always prevail. And so that if, if I can give any advice to any CEO that's watching this by any chance, that's my advice. Stop chasing trends. Build a company focus on revenue growth, and the investors will come. Well, stop chasing trends. Stop chasing the dragon. Are we talking about using heroin now on this show? I noticed we've migrated away from all of our uh, stock talk and dilution, and, and now we're talking social media. Uh, I love it. Hey, we can hit anything on this uh, program. So listen, I'm Stuart Smith with Small Cap Voice. This is the team from Supermassive Media. We'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Send us your ideas for what we should talk about next, because you know, as the NFL draft hits, I want to talk about all things NFL and fantasy football, but these guys won't let me. They are the nerd herd. That's super massive media. I'm Stuart Smith. Thanks for tuning in.